when I was going to, to school and to the high school, I had mainly uh, two types of uh, topics of interest. One was history and the other was uh, mathematics and physics. I specialized in, uh, in telecommunication, so after uh, my two years of study at Ecole Polytechnique, I did two years of study in the Telecom Paris Tech. I wanted to uh, go to research and uh, I was interested in transmission and it happened that they were in fact launching uh, a new project on uh, digital uh, cellular mobile radio. The idea was to jump directly to the next technology and to see what we would be able to do with, uh, with digital. In the uh, end of 1982, the European Commission had decided to set aside a set of frequencies in order to have a pan-European mobile system. And so they asked the standard body at that time, which was the CEPT, to say, OK, tell us what would be the, the standard for this, uh, this system. About in 1984, uh, there was a decision to uh, at least assess uh, what, was, uh, what would be a digital system, and then subgroups were created in order, in fact, to speed up a little bit the work. And then a work group was created on uh, signaling and system side, a subgroup on uh, speech coding, and a subgroup on uh, radio interface. And I was appointed uh, at the end of 1984 as the chair of this, uh, of this group. The most difficult part was to agree on the, what kind of digital system. I would say very quickly we discarded FDMA. We discarded also things uh, like uh, WebDM, for instance, that were uh, that have been used later on for 4G. And there were really two camps: uh, one majority on what was called narrowband TDMA, so which was a, a small number of channels put together in one uh, in one frequency channel, and another one which was on wideband TDMA with a kind of code access as well. Uh, which was uh, which was much smaller, but backed by the French and German industry. Uh, during 1986, at one point in time, the European Commission said, "Guys, uh, we are completely out of schedule. Uh, this is not going on forever. And so, if you are not able to give me a solution, I will select one." I would say that all this motivated everybody in order, in fact, to reach the timeline between 1988 and 1990. It was a parallel job in the industry to implement the standard. Oh, sorry. Ah, it's uh, Fred Lebrand from the, from Germany. Uh, sorry for a, a second, an old fellow uh, from the, the Standards Day. Hi, Fred. How are you? Hello, Alain. I'm calling you to congratulate on your induction into the Wireless Hall of Fame. Welcome to the club. Thank you very much. Imagine that we are just in the middle of uh, the recording of, uh, of my interview. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Since I can't attend the dinner, can I say something to the yes, audience? Yes, of course. Please do. Alain Malobertis, chair of the working group, which standardized the radio transmission of GSM. He was at the helm of that group for a full decade from 1984 onwards. His group created the first digital radio transmission standard for mobile communication systems. This radio solution enabled a mass market, initially in Europe and then in the world. It is still used today in more than 5 billion handsets worldwide. This work deserves the recognition by the induction into the Wireless Hall of Fame. Sorry again to interrupt, Alain. We can talk soon. No problem, Fred. Thank you again for your, for your call, and I will call you back later. Bye-bye. <laughs>